Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for having me today. Thank you for being here. Uh, as Tom said, my name is Byron Patrick, uh, Director of Presales and Solutions at Botkeeper. Uh, many familiar faces here because, of course, Maryland is my home, uh, previous chair of, of the association. So super happy to be here. In my role, I, I spend a lot of time on the road, going to a lot of conferences, talking to a lot of people in a lot of states. But always happy to be here uh, talking to my people. So um, today we're going to talk about the future of, of artificial intelligence in accounting. Um, I, I think uh, Jason's uh, session was a good start to that. So hoping to pick up where you left off. So thanks so much for that. Uh, with that, let's get into it. Does anybody know what this is? This is a MRI of the heart, a coronary MRI. And, it, you know, in the, the medical industry, there's a lot of life or death decisions that are made. Every day, they're making life or death decisions. And obviously, accuracy is incredibly important in the medical industry because lives are potentially lost with the wrong information, the wrong decision. So uh, one of the, the challenges with heart disease is identifying it early enough and determining whether or not you should prescribe a statin to uh, treat the heart disease and, and avoid potential complications. And there's a, uh, a, a score that uh, is given based on the, the reading of the MRI called the CADS-RADS. And based on that score, doctors can use that information to determine whether or not to prescribe a statin. Well, some researchers and scientists decided it'd be good to improve the accuracy of when it is time to prescribe a statin. So they thought artificial intelligence may be the right tool to do that. And they built an algorithm, trained that algorithm, and then ran that algorithm against 7,000 MRIs. Of those 7,000 MRIs, doctors have prescribed statins 69% of the time successfully. The machine learning algorithm, 93% accuracy. These are life and death decisions that are being made leveraging machine learning and artificial intelligence. We run into them all the time in the accounting industry, life or death accounting decisions. <laughs> so I'm certain that if we can use it to determine how to treat things such as cancer or heart disease, that we can use it to treat things such as debits and credits. So we need to level set because today, over the course of the next couple of days, we're going to do a lot of talking about artificial intelligence. People are going to use the terms improperly. They're going to use them interchangeably. So let's level set on a few things. Artificial intelligence, it's an umbrella term. It's an umbrella term for a technology that allows computers and machines to operate in an intelligent manner. Now, something very specific needs to be paid attention to is an intelligent manner. I've heard people use the, the definition that it's basically using technology to do anything a human could do. If that was the case, calculators qualify as artificial intelligence. Computers themselves do. The key is an intelligent manner cognitive thought being applied using technology. And you can see based on this, this uh, a kind of squid looking diagram here, artificial intelligence is the top. Th this is the ice cream with all the flavors. Machine learning, natural language processing, uh, image recognition, robotics, expert systems. Th this is not all inclusive. It's much larger than this. Uh, and we could talk for days about all of the pieces of what makes up artificial intelligence. But when somebody says machine learning, they're talking about a specific branch of artificial intelligence, the full term of AI, not necessarily to be used interchangeably. Today, we don't have time. I only have 12, 13 minutes. So we're going to focus on machine learning because the machine learning is one of the, the branches of artificial intelligence that uh, we apply most often right now in the industry. There are other elements, natural language processing, speech to text, and these things. But today we're going to talk about machine learning. Machine learning is a method of 
identifying a, a target or a goal, defining what goes into achieving that goal, and then training an algorithm to achieve it. And there's some things that we need in order to do that. The first thing we need is a lot of data. Now, artificial intelligence has gone through a number of cycles over the years, a lot of uh, hype cycles. But one of the things that's been missing for many years for making artificial intelligence successful is lack of data. We now have significant volumes of data, copious amounts of data that we can train with. In addition to data, we have to train it. So we need data that is structured. This is machine learning specifically. Don't confuse it with other aspects. We need structured data that we know what it is and we know what the outcomes of that data are. That way we can train the algorithms. And once we can train it, we can then apply new data and make a prediction. Some sort of prediction from the algorithm of what can be used. Now, one of the cool things is in addition to that prediction, we can also assign a confidence rating of how confident we are that that prediction will be made. Enrico, how you doing, sir? Our CEO just walked in. No pressure. Um, so a lot of data, the ability to train with that data, and then the ability to make a prediction with some sort of level of confidence. The way we use it at BotKeeper and a lot of the other technologies that we're going to hear about is we can t apply machine learning algorithms to transaction information. Transaction data comes into our accounting systems every day. Credit cards, bank transactions, there's a lot of data and a lot of information that all needs to get categorized. That's a goal or an outcome. We can apply the training from the algorithms and from there make a prediction as to how it should be categorized in the system. Way beyond the rules. Rules are great. Rules in QBO, they're awesome. When things change, when a letter changes in the way Starbucks is on the credit card receipt, you have to manage that. You have to go in there and change the way that that, that rule is being applied. When you're applying machine learning, you no longer have to manage those rules because you're no longer using rules. You're using artificial intelligence. You can intelligently categorize the transactions. You can ev evaluate it against hundreds, if not thousands of variables. When we as humans apply uh, our intelligence to transactions to make predictions, we do it based on what we know. We can't remember all 30,000 entries that, that have been applied in the GL. The machine learning does. The machine learning can look at things such as timing, the, the garbage that shows up at the end of the transaction that we usually just delete off. That means something to someone, and machine learning can detect patterns in that type of information can evaluate that, remember it, assign a, a prediction with a confidence level so we know whether or not to trust it or whether or not we need to do additional due diligence as humans to determine where to go from there and improve our overall accuracy level and efficiency. We can do it quicker and more accurate than humans can do it. How much time do I have, sir? Eight minutes? Oh, outstanding. So, this doesn't all happen automated. It is an augmentation of humans. Th this happens in the background, but then humans take this information, review it, review the, the confidence levels, things such as an Amazon transaction. An Amazon transaction could be office supplies, it could be food, it, it could be gifts, it could be furniture. I, I mean, it, the list is endless. So. The machine learning can certainly make some, some good assumptions based on a lot of information that is in there and where it should be going and how it should be treated. But it might require right now, today, maybe not soon, but today, some human eyes to then figure out where, where to go from there. This is early stage. There's a lot that is coming down the pipe. Right now, this creates a lot of efficiency and accuracy for you today, but where we're going, it's limitless. Think about the things that we do that take up a lot of our time that probably a year ago, maybe six months ago, maybe this morning, you didn't even think was possible. Uh, I just read an article this weekend 
that uh, scientists have used machine learning to identify the parts of, him, of uh, Henry VIII that Shakespeare did not write. Apparently, there's been rumors for years that somebody else was, was a writer to finish it, and they've used machine learning to figure that out. Who would have thought? I'm willing to bet that we'll be able to use artificial intelligence to review expense reports and approve the expenses per the corporate policy, that we'll be able to review bills from accounts payable and approve those for payment if they meet contractual obligations. I, I think about uh, you know maybe even the accruals that happen on a monthly basis. I'm willing to bet that there's artificial intelligence that will be able to handle all of these things for us, allow us to be higher value, reading the numbers, translating the numbers, and doing more with them than spending time in a spreadsheet trying to figure out how many days of payroll to accrue at the end of the month. Because I don't know about you, but that's not a good use of my time, and I don't believe it's a good use of anybody else's time here. There's a lot of exciting places we're going to go. It's only the beginning right now, so I'm excited to spend the next couple of days with all of you talking more about it, learning more, and see where we're at. Thank you so much.